Well, greetings and salutations, people out there into the ever world. Uh, I'm Dave, I'm the community manager for the Wayfinder community. And today we are going to do a walkthrough of your way. We're gonna take a, a look at starting from the um, community. We're gonna go through the syllabus, uh, uh, coursework, assignments, and bring you back to the community. And so uh, we wanna make sure that you are resourced as much as possible. And this is just a way for you to get some free help to navigate. If you can't watch now, that's fine. This is being recorded so you can watch it later. I always want feedback. So drop some information in the comment section below because I wanna hear your thoughts. And so um, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Um, the first place you're going to go whenever you, um, hold on a second, I got to click something. There we go. Whenever you go in, first and foremost, you want to go to community.alvet.edu. And what this does is it creates a single sign on. So anywhere you go from here keeps you signed in so you don't have to sign, on, sign in over and over again. And so um, in a previous video, I did a walkthrough of the community. We did a community tour. And so I showed you everything you need to know about the community, the tools and resources that are available to you. And so uh, to, in order to access your gen ed courses, um, so when you log in, I'm sorry, let's stop here for a second. When you log in on a computer or a tablet, you're going to see the carousel across the top. So this is probably going to look familiar to you. If you're on your phone, the carousel does not show up. So if you don't see your, the carousel on your phone, that's okay, that's normal, all right? It's not uh, set up to display on a phone correctly, so we decided not to show it at all because it's kind of messy. So the first place you wanna go is next to the home tab, you see academics. When you click on academics, you're gonna see gen ed courses. But before we do that, in the upper right-hand corner, you're gonna see where I have that uh, circle or that red box is your profile. So when you click on that, go down and click on profile, this takes you to your profile page. We encourage everybody to update your profile. Let us know a little bit about you. Post a picture of yourself. You can post a picture of your favorite food or your best vacation place. It doesn't really matter, but all of it gives us insight to knowing you a little bit more because we're a community, right? And we're here to support and encourage one another. So take a few minutes and update this information. And that way we can get to know a little bit more. And if you update your picture, you're gonna receive the trendsetters badge. So expect that in your inbox app immediately after you update that picture. Okay, so we're here to talk about your way. Let's get into the coursework. So again, academics, general education courses, and you're gonna be taken to this page. This page is unique to you. So you're going to see all the courses that are available, but there's going to be some differences between them. Um, and so we they're alphabetical and it starts in list. We have 21 general education courses offered through here, and you're going to see every single one of those. So what you're going to see that's going to be different for you. If you look on in that uh, box on the right hand side, you're going to see four different options. You're going to see go to course. That means you have to take the course. You're going to see course not required, which means um, based off of your program, it's not a requirement that you have to take. You're going to see verifying equivalency. So if we have received your unofficial transcripts and evaluation has been done, um, this means that we are waiting for your official transcripts so that we can get that officially transferred over. If you see course completed, that means you either completed the course or we've received your official transcripts and your evaluation has been completed. All right, so if it says go to course, just go ahead and click on go to course and it's gonna take you directly to the syllabus. So we're looking at GO 121, physical geography. Um, the syllabus are pretty much all gonna look the same. You're gonna have a little description. You're gonna have um, the objectives the, and, and textbooks. There are no costs to textbooks. Everything is embedded directly into the course content itself. So let me put this out there. If you're trying to do an assignment and you've not gone through the course content, you're not going to be successful on that assignment. And so a little bit more on that in just a moment. But um, we have our course objective. So this is a syllabus as, as true as you're going to find anywhere else in any other course. And it has a list of items on there, uh, supplemental materials for APA template, uh, policies, um, grading, 
And we're going to get a little more into grading here in just a moment, but I want to uh, pay special attention to those four items on the right hand side a course group. So every single course has a course group associated with it. That's kind of like your classroom. That's where the, the faculty are. So you can go there and ask questions to the faculty. If there's a question you don't understand about an assignment, go directly to that course, uh, that course group and ask an assignment. So GEO 121 has a course group associated with it. So across the top, if you look in that uh, gray bar across the top, you see groups. If you can click on that, you're going to see all groups to include the course groups. So make sure you join that group and use that as your classroom. Um, you're gonna see tons of information in there. Your feed is gonna be full of information. And if you have questions for the faculty, go there to ask those questions. The Benner Library, Olivet is a physical campus in Bourbon, Illinois. And the Benner Library is a physical library, but it also has lots and lots of online resources. So if in your writing, if you have to do research, um, we have tons of information in there uh, ready for you to get access to. So click on visit the library and then um, just tool around in there and you'll figure it out. Uh, across the top, you'll see four main subjects, um, topics, jump into those. That's where you're going to want to kind of live. So take advantage of the use of the Better Library. And we also have librarians who are ready to answer your question. If you have a question about something APA related, or about research or about where to get some help, ask a librarian. They are literally there to help you. Microsoft Office Download. Everybody who is an Olivet student gets access to Microsoft Office and your free download. This includes Word, PowerPoint, Excel, any Office tool, Office 365 tool that is made available, is made available to you. So click download now, and it's going to take you to another page where you're going to have to follow some rules and just it's not real complicated. Um, download that to yours, uh, to your computer, and it is yours to keep. It's yours to keep. Now, the last item is called Grammarly. Grammarly is a online grammar tool that um, we are providing to you, complimentary, and you get the premium version. And it's usually about $65 to $70 a quarter. You get it at no cost. So as long as you have an ONU email, you get access to Grammarly. So set up your account, get rolling on Grammarly today. You can type directly in Grammarly. You can type in Word and you can um, upload that into Grammarly. You can type things in Grammarly and download it. And it literally picks up on every single grammatical error that you could possibly imagine. So take advantage of that. It is a a free resource that we want to make sure that you uh, have access to that. So as you scroll down the syllabus a little bit more, you're going to see our grading and assessment policies and final how final grades are done. And um, if you need to submit a final transcript, there's a link there that show, tells you how to take care of that. But let's talk about grading for a second. So uh, you're going to see there's a lot of assignments and your grade is comprised of two things. Your final grade. One are your tests. You're going to see tests throughout the course, um, unit tests, not the quizzes, but the actual tests themselves. Those tests make 40% of your grade and you have endless retakes on those. So if you start with a 40% on your, your first test, take it again. And if you're not satisfied, take it again, but only your highest grade is going to be recorded. So that's awesome, right? And then the remaining 60% of your grade is going to come in your mastery assessment. That is the major project at the end of every uh, course that you have to take. And you're basically going to have to prove that you know what you're talking about in this course. So that's how assignments are, con are concluded um, or put together. So let me be clear about something. You have to do every assignment. And every assignment has to be marked complete on your syllabus. And we'll get into that lower section here in just a moment. But understand you have to complete everything in order for you to gain access to your mastery assessment. All right, so just take a look um, end of course surveys. As soon as you're done taking a course, you'll receive an email. Um, complete that end of course survey. We need feedback. We need your feedback. We need to know how we're doing, what's going on with the class, answer some questions, and uh, that way it gives us some feedback. And we have a lot of people taking courses all the time, okay? So it's anonymous. And when you submit it, we don't have a name associated with it. And so we never know who you are. It's completely anonymous. So have confidence in that.
as you continue to scroll down, you're going to see the assignments associated with the modules. So you have a module, which is like a box, right? Inside that box are little units. And the unit it was where the course content is delivered. So this little snapshot shows you all the assignments that are inside of that module. It's broken up into different units. And you could, in fact, go right here and click Submit Assessment. Um, but you don't know what you're submitting for. This is why you have to go into the course content. So when you click View Module, it's going to take you into the course content. So this is Module 1 for Introduction to Geography. You're going to see the hyperlinks there below, the ones that are highlighted in blue. Um, those are the units that make up that module. So a module is kind of like a, a week's worth of uh, a course within a course. Um, you're going to find assignments within there and tests. And um, across the right hand side, the top right hand side, you're going to see that's going to take about nine hours to get through this uh, module. That includes all reading, all assignments, everything included. Takes a, it's going to take about nine hours to get through that. Um, and you're going to see a point value. So let's put a pin in that point value there for a second. And I'll come back to there in just like, like you know, a minute. So once you click on the, any of those links, um, it's going to take you to the course content. And this is where the information is delivered. You're going to see the courses laid out the exact same. You're going to start out with the title and your unit objectives. And from there, it's going to vary um, just a little bit, but you're going to find similar things, text, PowerPoints. You're going to find PDFs. You're going to find a lot of videos directly embedded in there. You're going to find links to articles. Um, textbooks, everything you need to be successful in knowing about maps and the information they provide is right here. You're not going to have to go anywhere else outside other than an article that you may have to read, which is like the textbook, right, um, in order to be successful. So once you come to the end of that unit, um, you're going to find your assignments. So a discussion, discussion responses, learning activity, and then a test. All right, so Remember in the syllabus how it showed those assignments? This is where they get broken down into per unit. On the right hand side, you're going to see uh, it's going to take about an hour and 20 minutes to get through this unit alone. And that scrollable bar on the right hand side, let's say you, you need to go back somewhere, you can click on any of those topics and it takes you straight to that spot. So let's talk about the quiz. So every unit has a quiz. This is something that does not affect your grade in any way but there are point values associated with it. So if you say you take the quiz for the first time, you get 100 points if you get every question right. If you miss one and you, you then have to retake the whole quiz, it drops to 50 points and then 25 points every subsequent attempt after that. But these are just challenge points. How well do you know the information? How well do you, can you answer these questions? This doesn't affect your grade, it's just kind of fun. Just to challenge yourself to see how well did you learn about all this stuff. So in a sense, this is what a unit of information looks like. Um, it's it's going to vary from 60 minutes to 120 minutes to much more, depending on the amount of assignments that are found inside that unit. So let's head back and take a look back at that syllabus. Remember, this is where all your assignments for that entire module are at. So you see the first um, five assignments, the discussion, two discussion responses, learning activity, map projections, test module one unit one going back they're right there so this just consolidates so you do so you can get kind of like a bird's eye view of what's coming up so let's talk about the different types of assignments okay the first one we have is a learning activity a learning activity is a project-based assignment um, you're going to see some instructions you're going to have to answer the the directions usually you're going to do this in a word document you can also use Grammarly to check your grammar. Um, and so you're gonna see a rubric, which is gonna explain kind of like what is needed, what's expected. So instructions, um, just basic instructions, and then answer the questions found in the prompt. Usually you're gonna find a peer review associated with the learning activity. Uh, this specific unit does not provide a peer review. So just keep that in mind. Um, in most cases with the learning activity, you will see a peer review. So as you go down near the end, you're gonna see a place where it says a uh, summary of your work. Now you did your learning activity in a Word document or maybe a PowerPoint, depending on what's expected. 
you're going to have to save it to your computer and then choose file and you want to upload that but then put a brief summary put in like a sentence just a real brief synopsis of what your assignment was about and it's necessary you put that in there for a specific reason so when you go do a peer review you, now this uh little explanation of what your work is now displayed so again peer review you have instructions you have a prompt but underneath that you get to select which one you find the most exciting all right um, and that's why the summary is important because your summary is going to show up right here and it's giving the person who's going to use your paper to do a peer review so you're looking at other people's work in order to submit your peer review and there's a rubric for, for you to follow and it's it's legit i mean you're literally doing a peer review for other people's work so take that seriously and and answer the questions thoroughly um, make sure you're following that rubric well so let's talk about discussions uh, a discussion is basically that's what it is a conversation right you have instructions you have a prompt down below in that box all you have to do is respond and below that you're going to see a rubric and so what is the faculty expecting to see what are the expectations and so type in your answer down below where it says enter your discussion um, and uh, so this is just about you answering the questions and be thorough if you're going to use the textbook make sure you're citing the textbook per apa standards okay now i will drop in a couple bits of information inside of the uh, comment section below after this so that way you understand where to get help for apa now, with every discussion, there's going to be two discussion responses. So discussion response one, right? Again, this is just like the peer review. You're going to, but you're going to actually see the entire discussion here. So you have instructions, you have prompt. So click the one that you want, and then it'll pull up a page and you just type in your response. Be thorough, be complete, check the rubric, make sure you're doing what the faculty is expecting of you. Um, and then the last uh, type of assignment is a test. Tests are amazing. Um, they're designed to test your knowledge on the unit's content, not on anything else other than what you just got done studying and reading. So when you do this uh, and you take your test and you hit submit, it's going to take you right back to the top. You're going to see a grade. And as you scroll down, any question you got wrong, you're going to see wrong answer feedback. So it tells you go back to the unit and go to this section and look for the answer. So uh, we want to make, and again, you can take this as many times as you want to. The minimum passing score that you need for a test is 70%, um, but you can take it as many times as you want to to get the best grade possible. All right, so now that you've gone through assignments, let's look back at the syllabus. And the syllabus is very important because as you're seeing, it's changing. Every time you submit a test, your grade populates immediately. Every time you submit a, um, uh, an assignment, it's going to say submitted, Right, And once the faculty reviews it, you're going to see either complete or incomplete. So everything is going to be marked either complete or incomplete. Um, tests will have grades. Your assignments, discussions, discussion responses, learning activities, and peer reviews will have either complete or incomplete. If it's incomplete, you must resubmit. And you're going to see different types of feedback. You're going to see um, this where it says visible only to you. This is private feedback. So the faculty will be putting in different pieces of um, information. Some is going to be public, uh, which we'll talk about that here in just a second. But the other part is just specifically for you to see it as private. So take their feedback, go back and resubmit the assignment, jump back into the content, read up, polish up on what you need to know in order to be successful next time around. But as you move along, the syllabus will change. Remember I said that in order for you to access your mastery assessment, everything must be marked complete. Yes, that is true. Now, let's say you submit an assignment and it's your last assignment for the entire course and you want to jump straight into your mastery assessment. You have to wait until the faculty has reviewed, but they have 48 hours to respond. So you're going to have to wait about a day and a half in order to get a response um, for that so you can jump into your mastery assessment. So um, in the meantime, you can jump into another course and start working. And, and again, this is all self-paced. So you can jump into any course at any time and work however fast or however slow you, you need to. So let's jump back into the community. So this is the course group for FAC 126. Under groups, you'll see all those courses listed there and all the course groups. 
And so when you submit an assignment, not a test, but an assignment, an assignment, anything other than a test, and you get it marked complete, that's gonna post right here in this feed. So every course group, every course has a course group and it posts your completed assignments. So you actually get to see this whole display of completed information. And then when you um, respond to a discussion, you're, it will show up as a comment under the original post. So the post is the original assignment and then your feedback, either a peer review or discussion response is gonna show up as a comment. And I encourage you, go in there, go into a, the course group you're working on right now and take a look. It is awesome. It is amazing. And so uh, it only shows up there if it's marked complete. So take your time to look through all this. There's group details on the right-hand side. If you need to ask the faculty member a question specifically that you don't want to show up in the course group, click on their name and it takes you to their feed and you can ask their question right there. But use this as an opportunity to get feedback, to get help. If you have a question about an assignment, if you have a question about anything at all related to that course, go there. So let's jump back out to the community as a whole. As I stated on the community manager, so this is kind of like my job. This is, the, the, this is my existence. Um, if you ever have a question about anything that's not related to the course, I'm your go-to 100% of the time. Um, you can get a hold of me in a couple different ways. You can um, click on... Uh, what you don't see here is where student services located um, has up, been updated and now it says about Wayfinder. If you go into that and ask your question there, that goes directly to me. Um, you can find me anywhere. I post stuff all the time. Go into a course group, look for my name, click on my name. It takes you to my feed. Ask your question there. There's about five different ways to get a hold of me. So I encourage you to take advantage of that. Um, use the course. Uh, resources that are available to you. And so again, uh, I want to thank you for taking the time to come through all this with me. And uh, I hope you learned a lot. If you have any questions, drop that in the comment section below. I promise you I'll respond by, by within that same day. Unless it's Friday night, then chances are I won't get there till Monday. Um, but I am here just to support you and help you as much as I possibly can. Ask your questions. I want you to be a success. I want you to reach your goals. And you came to us because you have goals in mind. And I'm here to help you reach those goals, plain and simple. So again, I'm Dave. Uh, join us in two weeks as I'll be doing another tour of the community. We'll be going through the Wayfinder community. If you have any questions about that, you can ask me in advance or wait and join in. So again, thank you everybody. Thanks for taking the time to come out. God bless.